Hey everyone, it's Tyler and Michelle Strike at Universal Rackets, and today we are going to be going over the main reason why you are popping up the dinks, and the main solution that if you can implement into your pickleball game, you are going to pop up way less balls, and you are also going to be way more aggressive. A lot of players, when they get higher in levels, they are able to attack from lower, either at or below the net. And if you can learn this one tip, this one tactic, this one strategy that we're, we're going to go over, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to be more aggressive lower and hit lower balls more offensive. So should we get started? Should we tell them t the tip? I think you have to do that again. Okay. Because what you said didn't make sense at the end. Okay. Everything was good until the end. Hey everyone, it's Tyler and Michelle Stroik from Universal Rackets. And in this video, we're going to be going over Hey everyone, it's Tyler Michelle Strike from Universal Rackets, and in this video, we are going to be going over the number one reason why players pop the ball up at the kitchen. If you stay tuned for this whole video, we are going to give you this new tip that many players don't think about, and it will limit the amount of balls that you pop up while you're at the kitchen. As you get more advanced in pickleball, players are able to hit more aggressive shots from at or below the net, and here is the reason why. So the main reason why players are popping the ball up in the air is because they are bending down at their waist instead of getting low at their legs. Once again, you are popping the balls up in the air because you are bending down at your waist instead of dropping your center of gravity and getting low in your legs. And there are so many different parts that go into hitting a good shot in pickleball. You can think about 10 million things, but at the end of the day, we need short, simple tips to make better shots. So he's gonna give you the number one reason and the number one thing that you can do to change and fix in your game to hit a better shot that is not popped up and that lands in the kitchen and is unable to be attacked. And that is, again, just getting low into your legs. And here's what I mean. A lot of players, they have a low ball, they have a dink. Think about the pickleball. When the pickleball comes to you, the ball is going to bounce lower than the height that it comes at you. It's not like a super bouncy ball, right? Mm -hmm. The ground's going to absorb it. Right. So the ball comes this high, it's going to bounce for a normal dink, and many players, they just go like this. Let's show them. So why don't you go over there? Okay. And we're going to show you where most players go wrong when they're dinking. And then we can also get into some of the specific shots that are hard to hit back that can be resulted in a pop-up. Perfect, here we are. So look, they're standing here. <laughs> straight up and they're bending down at their waist. Again, they're bending down. My chest is going over my hips. Again, every single time I'm leaning forward, bending at my waist. And what happens though, is I go up more and then she can smash it down. Oh, I didn't know Again, that what I'm doing is I'm bending at my waist and look, that's pointing my paddle face up and then I have to hit up. Instead of doing that, what I want you to do is I want you to drop your center of gravity. If you can drop your center of gravity and think again, you're getting low in your legs instead of bending at your waist, it's going to allow you to get under the ball and go more forward than bending like this and having to pop the ball up. Two ways that I like to think about dropping my center of gravity and getting low in my legs, actually three ways is number one, however tall you are, you wanna be a foot shorter than your actual height. So I'm six foot tall, I wanna be five foot tall. The second way is you can literally just get into your legs and think if someone came to push you, if Michelle pushed me right now and I'm standing straight up, I would fall right over, okay? But if Michelle tries to push me and I'm into my legs, okay, I'm not going to go anywhere. So think that you're, you have stability. Think that you have a foundation. And the last way that you can, and this is my favorite way possible, is you can think that you have a ceiling above your head. So when I'm dinking right now, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a ceiling at my normal height. So when I stand up, here we are, I'm going to put a ceiling around my ear, okay? So stand up again, put a ceiling around your ear, envision, so I gotta stay, there's a ceiling, I can't go up, right? And now I'm going to dink. Again, I'm dropping my center of gravity now so I can go more forward rather than being above my ceiling and having to swing up and pop the balls up. So again, I'm dropping my center of gravity, I have a foundation in my legs, and I am below my ceiling at all the time. Again, now instead of going more low to high for my dinks, now I'm going more forward. I'm able to not only not pop the ball ups to my partner, but also I'm able to not make my shots as attackable because they're going through the court. Right, and 
All of that is great advice. And it's very simple to put all of that into practice if the ball is getting hit directly to your forehand. Now, where I struggle with, and a lot of players for sure have to be struggling with as well, is when the ball is hit not to you. So ideally in pickleball, you don't hit the ball directly to your opponents exactly where they're standing to their forehand. So if a ball gets hit to the center, to your backhand first, and then the next ball comes out wide, how do you move from ball to ball so that you can hit a successful dink back that's unattackable? What you're going to do is you're going to start working on pushing all through your legs. So not only we are getting into our legs, but we're going to work on going out to the ball and then pushing off our legs and getting back into the court. I want you to think that there is a magnet right here in the middle of your half for pickleball. You always want to go back to your magnet. A lot of players, and including myself, when they're dinking and especially when they're drilling, they're literally just standing here Sorry. and then she goes up the middle. Oh. The first shot, it didn't really demonstrate it. Well, I but, mean, I was trying to hit. Okay, comment how mean I am to you, everyone. <laughs> Shout out to Steven or whoever and his wife. Okay, here we are. We're going to keep going. Here we are. Okay, and then she can go up to the middle like that and win the point. So what you want to do is instead of just standing here like you're normally dinking, and this is a huge thing to do in drilling, you're going to get into your center of gravity. You're going to go out, and then you're going to push your legs back into the middle. It's almost like a side lunge. Yeah, you're going to shoot back. Okay, so again, when I go out to the ball, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go out here, and I'm gonna push back. Again, I'm gonna go out here, and push back to the middle. I'm gonna go out wide, look, and then I'm gonna push my legs back. Go out here, push my legs back, okay? So I'm going to keep on going back and forth and utilize pushing back into the court. And the only way you can do that is by dropping your center of gravity. Because you're not gonna move pushing off like a statue. There's so, just no way you're getting to those balls. A great tip for this and to get to the middle balls is to always end up on your outside leg. So once again, when you go towards the next ball, I want you to make sure that you push back off. So watch what I mean. Here we are. So I'm gonna go again. Here we are. Forehand. I'm gonna go, here we are. Now watch, she's gonna go in the middle and watch. I'm gonna push off my outside leg. Again, I'm going to go over, here we are, on the outside leg, and then I'm going to push and then go outside leg. So by utilizing that outside leg, it's going to help you get back into the court. The next thing that you can do as well, and you can't do this if you're standing up, is you can take more balls aggressively out of the air. So what I mean by that is if I'm standing straight up, it's going to be super difficult to take balls out of the air. And what do they say in every single coaching video whatsoever, the first drill that they all teach about, and every single pro come here, they'll be like, you know, here's what I want you to do. I want you to put something down right in front of the kitchen line, and what you're going to do now is if the ball is at or behind the kitchen line, you're gonna take it out of the air instead of letting the ball bounce. That is my pickleball tip for you. And I feel like that's the most overused pickleball tip that coaches give. It's a good tip. It's a it good tip, but every overused. single person does it all the time. Like, I guess you have to do it, but here's what I am talking about. If you're standing straight up and we're not doing what we learned, watch what's going to happen. The deep dinks, I'm going to get, to, to get jammed and I'm going to have to pop the ball up in the air. So again, if I'm standing straight up, look, she hits a deep dink, I'm going to have to take it off a bounce like that. If I can drop into my center of gravity, that's going to allow me to extend further out and basically it's going to allow me execute that drill that I was talking about way more easier because now I'm not going to let the ball bounce, I'm going to be taking it out of the air. And this is what created you to be such an aggressive, powerful player that a lot of people are afraid of on the court. Because listen, right? You can't be aggressive on a ball on a short hop. Again, if the ball comes and bounces, I can only pop the ball up in the air. But I can be aggressive leaning down and taking it out of the air. Again, the only thing that I can do on a short hop or when the ball gets jammed up to me, and this is why I pop the ball up in the air again, is pop the ball back up. But if I can lean over and I can be more aggressive and really take it out of the air, 
that's when I can be aggressive. That's when I can hit way better balls. So this is the number one thing that you are not doing in your pickleball game, and it's limiting you from being aggressive at the kitchen. Again, I feel like a lot of players, they're like, oh, I can't be aggressive. I don't know when to be aggressive at the kitchen. And it's because they're starting out like this. And that's what we're teaching you not to by, again, dropping your center of gravity, thinking that there's a ceiling above your head or being a foot shorter than you normally want to be. And what I was going to go off on that is they could potentially be popping the ball up and then reverting to thinking, oh, is it my form? Am I, am I, how's my grip? Is it my grip that's causing me to pop the, the ball up? Is it me taking the paddle back too much? No, it's your poor decision making. So it's all in deciding, can you take the ball out of the air? Should you take the ball out of the air? And what happens if you take a step back and now you're on defense and you pop the ball up out of the air? You have to know when to make the choice and then how to execute that choice to create an aggressive play. 100%. And again, it all starts from this. It's not about what paddle you have, what grip you have, this, this, that, that. Form. It's just from getting down in the center, in your center of gravity. And this is why I hope this video is so good for you. So let's do it, okay? Mm -hmm. So again, I'm going to now be able to lean over and take the balls out of the air every single time. Okay, so what did I do wrong there, guys? I didn't end up on my outside leg and I had to react to that ball. I want to make sure I cover the middle as well. Here we are. So again, I'm going to try to take more balls out of air and be a So by getting into your center of gravity and dropping your legs, I'm going to be able to hit way more balls out of the air instead of taking it on the short hop, okay? So again, by dropping my center of gravity, I'm gonna be able to take more out of the air and I'm not going to be Ooh. defensive. I'm either going to be neutral or aggressive. And no. if I really get low, it's going to allow me to get below the ball so I can be aggressive and rip that shot every single time. All right, one more. So again, drop the center of gravity down and you can get In. under the ball. Now we talked about a drill on our last video. Actually, the one couple before this was a drilling video. And I talked about how for the first 10 minutes, what we do is we just warm up our forehand dink and then we play games up to three. So that now one person is dominating the game and then you kind of like lose your hope. Um, this is a very similar drill in the fact that you can do it for 10 minutes or you can play to three. But the whole point of Tyler's job and my job together is to be as aggressive as possible at the kitchen. Take every ball of the air that you can and then the winner gets to keep their points. Yes, 100%. So always turn it into a drill and that's how you can get more reps and become a better player. I was just looking at, so where we film, there's like a dog park right next to it and this super cute golden retriever. He got, he got the snip. He got the snip poor, snip. poor, he's got a cone around. The cutest dog ever, his name's Murphy. He walks around, he's walking around with a cone and he's like hobbling. Poor boy. Poor boy. But yeah, so <laughs> what you have to do is you have to make sure again, you drop your center of gravity. You're going to be able to pop less balls up. You're going to be able to be more aggressive. We gave you different ways to think about it. Again, different tips work for different people, not one size fits all. So think that you have your beautiful partner pushing you super hard like you did. I think you enjoyed that. Um, you can be a foot shorter than you actually are. And then also when you practice these and you listen to this video, you're going to find yourself in a match and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, how did, how did that just happen? How did yeah. I finish that point? Oh, the answer is you stayed at the catch and you took the ball out of the air where other times before watching this video, you may have taken a step back and popped it up. And here's the thing. Once you do this once or twice and you reap the benefits and you're like, wow, I can be way more aggressive because I'm getting into my legs and I'm not bending at my waist you're never going to bend at your waist again because you're going to see how much easier it is and how much more effective and confident that you're going to be yeah so if you guys have any questions comments or concerns please let us know in the comments below make sure to subscribe to our newsletter it's going to be coming out soon this make dress sure. is lululemon it's the align material and it's so comfy and cute we're both using the selkirk 006 paddle and we both have the sketchers performance sneakers on for pickleball. Shout out to Skechers. I think they're the best shoes in the pickleball game right now. They're the most stylish shoes for sure. They are. I'm absolutely obsessed with those shoes. They're like beige, brown, and gold. Neutral. Looks super cool. I love it. Um, and yeah, shout out to Selkirk. Any type of uh, product, Selkirk product that you want, click the link in our description, get a gift card with a purchase. You get an amazing paddle. You can get a couple balls. You get a couple balls. You can get a hat, whatever you want. Mm -hmm and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So have a good one, happy hitting, and we will see you guys next time on court.